The fact of the matter is, in most cases, many Muslims do not have the slightest idea where they stand before their Lord. They continue to blind themselves in their persistence and error. They fail to realize that if we are to gain the true benefit of this life, the only way is to accept the truth of life. This means total submission to the will of Allah. That means clearly to live by the divine dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not our own personal whims. He alone is the all-knowing of all things, including what we do in the open and what we do hidden from people. He knows what we are thinking even before we think it. We only kid ourselves to think that we are hiding our true selves from him. Moving onward, I wish to express that the quotations which I had mentioned above from Maulana Khan was not done so, but with the intention of expressing to you, through comparison of agreement, given from others besides myself, that you might also compare your own independent rational reasoning as well. I did not mention it to you so that you may become blindly convinced of a thought simply because I myself or anyone else dictates that the words being spoken are indeed factual. As I mentioned earlier, always confirm any ideas with Al-Quran and Asuna, the tradition or the mannerism of the Prophet, to reassure agreement of what is being taught by people. You should get into a consistent habit of this system, as the concept of Ijtihad, individual rational reasoning, as well as Ijma, collective intelligible consensus, both of which increase the chances for the best results of sound, comprehensible, and considerable understanding. These are the most important concepts that I wish to emphasize so that you might better understand the foundation of this lecture, inshallah, God so willing. This also helps us to build and strengthen our Iman, that is faith, in the truth, thus enabling us to truly accept things of life for what they truly are, even though we may not always be able to completely comprehend what it is that we are seeing, hearing, experiencing, etc. Allah, the exalted, the wise, reminds us of the importance of accepting the reality of life, both what we commonly understand as well as those things which we do not. At least we can agree to the fact that the whole of existence comes from Him alone. An analogy of this reminder of our Lord can be found when he explains to us the foundation of his book, Al-Quran al kareem the noble recital. In it are verses, basic or fundamental, entirely clear. They are the foundation of the book. Others are not well established in meaning, not entirely clear. But those in whose hearts is a deviation or perversity follow that part which is not well established in meaning, seeking discord and searching for its hidden meaning. It would only bring us discord if we were to blindly move into something which is surrounded by lack of knowledge and uncertainties. Allah does not guide the righteous believers with uncertainties, but only with clear evidence. We are encouraged by the Holy Prophet wasallam to abstain from those things which are doubtful and which we are uncertain of. When he says, leave that which makes you doubtful for that which does not make you doubtful. Our Lord has not placed us in a world in which our surroundings cannot be used to assist us in instruction. Many things which have been created for man's direct use, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fashioned them for us in such a way that we can easily grasp the manner in which they should be used, assembled, or consumed. Think of an orange, for example, with its brightly colored, attractive peeling. The taste of the peeling, however, is bitter. It is commonly agreed by those who eat them that it is the juicy pulp inside that is the main source of interest. So one soon understands that he must first remove the bitter tasting peel in order to eat the fresh, sweet tasting fruit inside. Another example could be found in the observance of the horse, strong and sturdy as he is running swiftly across the plains. A man was soon after finding the horse easily tamed, discover that the horse would make a good source of either transportation or at least become for him a decent support to help him carry his heavy burden. We are even reminded of similar examples in our Quran al kareem Amongst those examples is the lesson which Allah to Allah exalted be him, gives us 
about the bee. And thy Lord taught the bee to build its abode in the mountains and in the trees and in the habitations of man. Then eat of all fruits and follow the ways of your Lord made easy for you. There are issues from within their bodies a drink of varying colors, wherein is healing for men. Verily, in this is a sign for those who give thought. Another example from Al Quran al Karim is that of the cow, about which our Lord explains to us of its nature, which translated into English means. And verily, in the cattle, there is a lesson for you. We give to you drink of that which is in their bellies from between excretions and blood, pure milk, platable to those who drink. All things which have been created for man's usage are to be used in the most appropriate manner understood. The approach to doing this may vary from person to person. The objective, however, remains the same. One may wish to eat an orange by first peeling it with his hands, while another might prefer to slice it with a knife into quarters. With the man of wisdom accepts the fact that his understanding of life is according to the status of his disposition. He can only see clearly whatever is brought before his sight by the will of Almighty Allah. He realizes that his perspective of the most grand design which Allah, the giver of life, the designer of all things, is seen from a very small point of view when compared to the enormous bounty of Allah. Therefore, he soon comes to understand how dependent he is upon the source of all knowledge, Allah. Overwhelmed by the very thought of his Lord's majestic presence, the righteous wise man surrenders himself wholly to his master. The guidance of Allah, his straight path becomes the humbled man's only modus operandi for executing his judgment intelligibly in his short life on earth, striving to maintain his focus on the light of life which has been reflected throughout the history of mankind through Allah's prophets and messengers, the last of whom was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the way to the ultimate eternal success, Jannah, everlasting paradise, inshallah. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra, Ayat 84, Say, everyone acts according to his own disposition, but your Lord knows best who it is that is rightly guided on the way. Therefore, it is essential for us as true believers to adhere as closely as possible to al quran al-Karim, Allah's divine dictates recorded in the most authentic book, in the best manner that we are able to understand it, asking the Lord in supplications for clear guidance on all significant matters, conquering doubt by the permission of Allah. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah wa hadu la sharika la la al-mulk wa la al-hamd in Allah ala kulli shay min qadir. Brothers and sisters, uh, viewers, I pray that uh, you uh, will take consideration and reflect upon the content that has been cited today, and inshallah you will tune in again upon the citing of the next portion of the Defender of the Open Door. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to email. SoulJourneyOfLife at Yahoo.com That's SoulJourneyOfLife at Yahoo.com I look forward to your comments and questions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.